up a tummy. Hey guys. Hi. I just guess I got a high. All right. Hey, what's up, everybody? All right. Let me address the 500-pound ele elephant in the room, because I'm sure you're all wondering. I'm a Taurus. <laughs> now, I had a stroke when I was a baby, and that's why I look like I'm about to walk over to your table and go, "We're out of the Chardonnay. Are you going to Sauvignon Blanc?" <laughs> People would say to me, Tommy, why you gotta tell those stroke jokes, man? Because if I did, homeboy would be staring at me going, yo, you think he knows he's about to land a falcon? <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's people ask me, Tommy, do you have any self-esteem issues because of your physical disability? Not really. I mean, honestly, I'm barely physically disabled. Like, if I was as black as I am physically disabled, I'd be Drake skin toned. <laughs> so I just mess with those people, you know, I'll do this laugh, like this kind of condescending laugh, like, ha, ha, just like I laugh in front of you people, ha, ha, because looking at the room, I can still take every single one of you. I'll put the right arm behind my back and use this as a billy club, come on. <laughs> nah, nah, dude, the only time this ever gave me any social anxiety or, or self-esteem issues was when I was working at my last job at Yelp. Now you guys are familiar with Yelp, right? Yeah, so it's a multi-million dollar tech company. I hire a lot of hot, sexy people to work there. And I'm honored, you know, being one of the hot people. It's a lot of responsibility. And I don't mind being hired based on my looks. But I mean, these people I worked with, they were super socially smooth as well, you know? Like I, like I got a personality of the guy who goes to an Olive Garden and complain. And I mean, that's hard, man. Me not acting like everybody's eccentric grandfather, you know? Like if I'm on a date with a girl, and it's going well, you know, I gotta pray that I won't send her home with a kiss on her forehead. <laughs> yeah, man, it's rough, it's rough, you know, man. Jesus Christ, it's rough. It gets lonely sometimes, honestly, you know? I'm fine now, but a couple years ago, I was living in Los Angeles, and I tell you, I was so lonely. I, three years there, I couldn't point to one person I could call a friend, you know? It got so bad, I had to chat up bar flies. And one dude was actually pretty helpful, his name was Andy, you know? He was an accountant over at Warner Brothers. And I said to him in defeat one day, like, Andy, what the hell am I gonna do to make friends in this town, man? And without skipping a beat, he takes a shot of whiskey and goes, join AA. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, I was living there for three years and I was craving human emotion and human attention for so long that I started having conversations with my Alexa. And I stopped, because she's a terrible conversationalist. You know, Alexa's a bad conversation is when the voices in your head are more entertaining to talk to. <laughs> Which is ironic, because the voices in my head speak Portuguese. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. But loneliness, people, is something that's been with me my entire life, whole life. You know, when I was growing up outside of Baltimore, suburbs of Maryland, I was lonely. And then I felt disconnected from my peers, and then my brother died in a car accident when I was seven. Which was awesome, because I inherited his PlayStation. Nah, nah, now I'm fast forward, living in New York, and I'm a comedian, and I got comedian friends. And us comedians, we're a rare, rare type of people, you know, we have hearts full of love. So I can't really say I'm lonely, you know. Uh, in fact, I was hanging out with a friend of mine the other night, and she ended up kissing me and telling me that she loved me. Yeah, you know how drunk white girls are. <laughs> anyway, I, you know, I figured I, I, had, I had her in the friend zone, so I didn't even think she was an option. And I figured she had me in the friend zone too, you know. Cause she would text me nudes for feedback. <laughs> fun times, fun times. Ah, oh, jeez. So you guys smoke weed, anybody? <laughs> Woo, yeah. What, what happens when I say crack? <laughs> yeah, I don't do crack, guys. Listen to Whitney, crack is whack. But uh, <laughs> now I, I stopped smoking weed like three years ago. And then I picked it up again this past 420. And things have changed, people, things have changed. Like, legit, all these weed names now are super aggressive. I legit have no idea what I'm trying to get high to chill or to get even with somebody. <laughs> you listen to these names. You got Abusive Kush, Violator Kush, Bomb Threats, Chernobyl, <laughs> AK-47, OJ should've burnt the house down after he cut Nicole's head off. <laughs> all right, guys, that's my time. Give it up for your host. <laughs>